at 0800 you have color. So we're sitting there slitting. These planes are going by. And of course, at first we thought they were our planes and just didn't pay attention. With the fellow in charge, who had been the Asiatic fleet, he knew what the plane when he saw one. So he says, See, he gave them a verbal command. Up to that time, there'd been no general alarm. It's incredible how far this thing went before anybody would walk up. <laughs> he said, those are not uh, our planes. Those are jet planes, G general quarters. And, uh, so I knew what I knew what th th what that meant. So I got, and then finally the ship came alive, and they started to clang, clang, clang. It that it is. So I got up on the bridge, and just as I got up on the bridge and turned around, this fellow Red Camel, I have to give him credit, because he didn't have anybody to tell him what to do. But he was there, and he fired, and he had a direct hit. I mean, that, that plane just exploded in midair. It was a beautiful sight because we felt pretty stupid, you know, but all of a sudden we have to digest the fact that we're under attack from Japan right here in Pearl Harbor. I mean, we thought, my God, how bad can it get? And But Red went ahead and fired, and as it turned out, he was the only guy on the ship that got hurt <laughs> because uh, this gun, there was some something to do with the mechanism, but he was courageous enough to put his elbow in there, to boost it along, and he ends up getting a broken elbow, elbow out of it. But and uh, so he hit that direct, and then a few minutes later, another one, which had already been hit, he finished it off. So we take credit uh, for two planes. So here we are, a non-combat ship. See, just a service duty ship, and we're firing. Shooting down planes. The Navy rule, Navy regulation, you were not supposed to have ammunition topside in peacetime. See, that was it. You know, everybody was afraid somebody was going to start something. So, so, but, and that, that and so you had ship after ship after ship, all ships all around us, none of them were firing. Because, hell, the ammunition was below decks. The guy that had the key to the locker, he's probably out on a picnic. See, that was Sunday morning. A lot of people had gotten up at six. And, Seven in the morning and hit the beach. You know they'd gone on liberty. So uh, we so from that that was pretty much it because it Red it did the biggest thing for us. He shot the two planes down and then the day went by and of course we didn't know. In the meantime, the one thing I could see from that ship's bridge were these fuel tanks. And I thought, well, why haven't they hit the fuel tanks? You know, I mean, they're hitting the air. Why don't they hit the fuel tanks? Well, since that was my first war, I didn't know they always hit the fuel tanks last. Of course, I didn't know then they had a three, they had a three range plan. They were coming in on three waves, and the, the fuel tanks were put on the third wave. See, well, the, uh, as it turned out, thank God, if they'd hit the fuel tanks, I wouldn't be here. And that'd be the end of that. Well, up from the bridge, I could see the, the pandemonium that was going on around the harbor. I mean, I could see the Arizona. I could see the, the, that whole row of battleships there, California, and a whole bunch of them. I could see all that. So I knew that, that we were had gotten off light, and I understood why, because we were not important enough to be a target. Um, would it be too painful to talk about what you were seeing? Well, I'd rather not. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't want to get into that. Uh, All right. Now, you get started. Well, the idea, and I, I, I can't stand it.